guest, this is Joel Edinburgh. He's a professional saxophonist and I'm a technology guy on a bunch of startups. And uh, we're building a digital saxophone and clarinet and flute for educational purposes, basically for kids to learn how to play. Um, basically, here's an actual instrument that you see here. And there's software, online software, that basically is used to learn how to play. Everybody knows the benefits of music. Music education improves it all sorts of cognitive processes and so forth. But in the saxophone, and a lot of instruments too, this, but in the saxophone specifically, there's a lot of frustrations when kids begin to play. It's hard to make a sound at the very beginning. You spend the first few weeks just to make a sound. A lot of kids want to play music, right? They don't want to sit there suffering and struggling with the instrument. So it becomes a very frustrating thing, and a lot of them give up, much the frustration of parents and um, teachers. And it's also they're loud, of course, without headphones or anything, and they're kind of not engaging for, for kids. The um, educational methods used now with books and so forth, they're kind of boring for young kids. So what we're hoping to do is make it actually easier to play music. We're sort of turning music education upside down. We're starting with actually making music. You play it, it plays a note, it does all these things. You don't struggle with the instrument. And then afterwards, then you kind of learn how to play the real instrument. And you keep this along because it's an instrument in its own right. Uh, it's got a bunch of features. Headphones are the most important one, but also connects to garage band and so forth. And the method is engaging, colorful. You can see over there there's like sheet music and it plays along as you play. It plays along with you and tells you your mistakes and gives you advice and hints and so forth. I'm going to play a short video of this, this kid, but basically about five minutes after getting it in his hands, this is what he did. It's a better part. <laughs> That's the best part, right? Yeah. You're not actually going to listen to it or hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Joel here is going to play a few pieces for us that he's worked on. And you know, as a musician, I really like these are the things that kids will like. Um, you know, it's lightweight and it uses capacitive touch sensors, which I think, which make it. You know, with a saxophone, you have keys. They're kind of they're heavy. You can you can play fast with them, but we don't actually have a key. You can play a lot faster, and so kids will like that. Um, also. Um, you know, we have like a two octave range on this thing, uh, up to five, depending on what, what mode you want. Um, we usually go with two because it's usually easier with fewer options. It's always easier to learn and then make it more difficult later. It's kind of a whole, our whole process, right? Make it simple, then go difficult. Um, and then you can actually have different multiple sounds. So hopefully this thing will be loud enough. Griffin, you want to just yeah. hold this in the front? Yeah, if you learn songs for 
if you learn songs first, it's a lot easier, and that's what encourages people. So, do you have any questions? Can you make it sound like a saxophone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get that question a lot, and if you've ever heard someone play saxophone on a keyboard, it sounds terrible. Um, it, because it's not making the sound in the same way, and at least for me, whenever I do that, I'm like, this is just terrible. So we'd rather just make it sound like a really cool, fun instrument than try to make it sound like something that's not 100%. Yeah? So how has the uptick when they start with this and transition to an actual instrument? Because there's, I would argue, there's idiosyncrasies between going from a digital instrument back to the regular instrument. Well, the idea is that we, we want to teach people how to play music. So the, it has the same fingerings as a saxophone or a clarinet or flute. We'll have different modes, uh, different options, because they're all very similar, but with a few differences. Um, so the idea is to learn the fingerings, to learn how to read music. And then when you transition to the instrument, you already know how to play the music, and then you only have to learn how to make a sound out of it. Um, I had a lot of, I've had students who just get frustrated right away if they can't get it you know, if they can't be an expert in a week, they can't sound like Charlie Parker or Led Zeppelin, they, they don't want to do it. Um, so if we can teach them how to do that, easily they'll be more encouraged. And then we want to have the software that actually encourages them to practice. Um, you know, if parents, they don't want to pay for private lessons if their kids don't practice. True. <laughs> uh, you in the back? So the instrument doesn't require uh, an armature or you're not, you're not, all you do is blowing air. You're not approaching the instrument. Instrument. Correct. Um, it does use a regular kind of clarinet mouthpiece, and that helps just to get the sensation, understand how to hold it. Um, and it does help uh, with like tonguing notes a little faster for me, like a, you know, uh, like a. But like, so you can do faster tonguing, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much just blown to the instrument. If you play it and I play it, we'll, we will sound the same. Um, it does have a read. Though. It does, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it, <laughs> essentially, it has a read. Um, I'm using a 3D printed read. Um, it, I, I've tried this on a real clarinet. It doesn't make a sound. Uh, but it's more so just to give a similar feel um, as a real embouchure. Uh, yeah. I thought about a paradigm shift in learning instruments. So rather than teaching just the regular instrument, I could see there is a possible you create a mode where you play to use the fingers without blowing first. And just learn first this thing and then go to the blowing because that way actually it is perhaps much easier to learn. Sure. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're exploring all, all ways to make this as easy and as approachable as possible. Uh, yes? Yeah, two questions. Uh, one is do you have multiple samples or is there only the one? Uh, so this thing. Uh, actually comes with an internal synthesizer. So for more advanced users, you can go in and create your own sounds, um, and it will actually have a built-in synthesizer, so or a built-in sampler. So you could use a saxophone sample or a cat meowing or fart samples or whatever you want. <laughs> I didn't go into that. Actually, they're, and, and generally they are. It's just a shell. And actually has a speaker inside and a battery, so it's a self-contained unit. We plug it in for, you know, obviously the room, but um, it works on its own. Uh, I think we got one more question, so you over there. Um, so are there going to be applications, I guess, in the future for, um, I guess, transitioning the instrument over to perhaps like a MIDI or something like that? As Because, you know, we, you can only learn f from it for so long. I would hate to see the type of technology that you've integrated into it just go to waste. Uh, it, it has MIDI. Uh, you can plug it into GarageBand, Ableton, uh, use whatever sounds you want. Uh, okay. Um, but the nice thing is, since it's still an all-in-one instrument, I mean, I'm, I'm just plugging this into an app, just so you can all hear it, and then it works. Um, and then it has the headphone jack, with, which you know my neighbors and my fiance like, <laughs> especially my neighbors. They they, they appreciate the uh, twelve. They don't. They didn't really like the twelve a.m. practice practice <laughs> sessions they used to have. So <laughs> they don't really know now. I think that's all the time we have. Um, and I just want to just talk about quickly about what we're looking to get out of this. Um, right now, you know, our next step is to get funding. Um, we want to, you know, fully develop that software. We want to be able to pay people to, you know, hire the proper people to really develop good software and uh, get this into, you know, our ramp up manufacturing so we can start bringing this out to market. Um, so that's kind of our 
the, or at least our next step and what we're hoping to get out. So anyone knows anyone with a spare lots of money? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>